In this video, we're going to take a look at the Kaweco Brass Sport. So let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. This is a pen that I got because I always had some trouble with the plastic uh, sports. Not that the pen is any kind of a problem. I kept losing the plastic sports in my pocket. I needed a pen that was a bit heavier, and this is the pen that I went for. The result became a pen that is almost always in my pocket. It is almost always inked up. It is a very useful pen to just have on me when I'm out and about. Now, with that, I did understand that in their broad nibs, they can have a little bit of baby's bottom. And I used purchasing this pen to serve two purposes. At the time I got it, I was getting my first Pelican that had a broad nib, which has that reputation. This pen did not have a uh, baby's bottom on its broad, but I changed the nib out for the fine because I felt the fine was better for just walking around and having to sign receipts and things like that. Here is a pen that is absolutely worth the upgrade in money to get the metal version, at least for me. Now that we know how I feel about the Kaweco Brass Sport, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Kaweco Brass Sport came in a box like this, which contained a box like this, which along with the pen contained a pack of cartridges like this. I really like the tins that these, pen, these pens come in. They just, Something about them, the small containers for me are these things that I really do enjoy. And I like how very vintage the packaging for these pens look, especially considering it's a fountain pen. So huge bonus on the packaging. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. And as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap, I'm generally okay. So how many turns does it take to uncap? The Kaweco Brass Sport takes one, just over one turn to uncap. Barely over one turn to uncap. Absolutely perfect. And it works flawlessly. This pen can stay in my pocket for a week not get used, and still has no trouble starting up when I go to use it. Awesome. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a steel fine nib. As I stated, I swapped the nib out. The original nib was a uh, steel toned. I changed it for the gold tone only because that was the one I had. I don't think either of them look bad. I do think it looked better with the steel tone nib, but choose to leave the nib that is on there, there. I'm just too cheap to go out and get another one just for the sake of another one. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Kaweco Brass Sport uses Kaweco's syringe type filler, which holds approximately 0.5 milliliters of ink, their aerometric filler, or standard international short cartridges. The ink of the day is Califolio Classic Gris de Pen. I know this is a pen that people generally look at just using the cartridges. I'll admit that if you use their aerometric converter, it is horrific. You barely get any ink into it. However, their converter, I think, is very good. And I know people have bad things to say about them, but I use it in the in as my pocket pen, in, in, uh, 
the pen in my pocket and don't have any issues. I don't have to use uh, cartridges. Although I do use the Kaweco cartridges quite frequently. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some people like to post pens and some pens need to be posted to use comfortably. Like the Kaweco Sport just in brass, you need to post this pen in order to use it most comfortably. It becomes a good size and the weight of this pen is fantastic. It really keeps all of it there when you do that. It makes it very nice. Where unposted, it is just plain too short. Small in the pocket, big in the hand. Now, the important part, the writing sample. Being a small pen, the weight that it has really does serve its advantage. When it's lighter, I do find they feel much smaller in my hand just for being so light. The weight of this in its metal version really does make it feel as complete a pen as you would need it to be. And it is small in the pocket, big in the hand, or at least big enough in the hand. Do I see this as something that I use for really long writing sessions? No. I don't normally do full pages of writing with this pen. I have, and I haven't experienced any kind of hand cramping issues. So while it's not my go-to for long writing sessions, it certainly could use it. The limiting factor being its ink capacity at that point. Now, if you're using one of the plastic versions, you can eyedropper it if you wanted. This one can't because it's an all metal pen. I say can't only because I've never tried it. And that tends to be the uh, standard wisdom that, wisdom that everybody goes with that the metal is going to alter the ink, which I agree. I wouldn't eyedropper this. It, it is metal bodied after all. An absolute winner in a pen. Do I think most people are going to go after the brass version? No. I think most people go after the plastic versions because of their multitude of colors. There are other metal versions. I wanted the patina of this pen getting older, and I am absolutely in love with how this pen looks as it ages. It's even to the point that I've had times where I'll find myself holding on to it just to try and get a bit more aging onto it. Now you are gonna get that coppery smell onto your hands as you're using this, which if that's a problem for you, then this would be a pen to avoid. But I generally find it pretty pleasant to write with. And it does very well because it is a drier pen. So even on cheaper papers, it does really well. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. And here's how it compares to a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. This fine is a fine writing fine. I want to say it's a little bit finer than a fine, but not quite an extra fine. I like it. It can feel scratchy to some people. It has a lot of feedback. Not scratchy, a lot of feedback. But I enjoy feedback in my pens. So how does this nib compare to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Kaweco Brass Sport with a fine nib, here it is next to an airmail regal, which writes like a fine nib. A Conklin word gauge with a fine nib. A Noodler's Charlie, which writes like a fine nib. A Lamy All-Star with a fine nib. And a Namiki Emperor with a medium fine nib.
So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped. Here it is uncapped. And here it is posted. Having seen the size comparisons, you can see that when it is closed up to be in your pocket, it is very small huge advantage. And when it's posted, it is a normal sized pen when a normal sized pen is unposted. So if you can use a normal sized pen unposted, this is great. At this point, we need to clean out the pen just because it's dirty. sure to check out the next pen review video where we take a look at the Namiki Emperor. If you want to be able to support not just my channel but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.